What's up YouTube? My name is John Jackson and today I want to show you a basic logo animation. I'm going to cover a couple techniques here including how to use shape layers and how to do some basic text animation. So without further ado, let's dive into After Effects and I'll show you how I made this little logo animation thing. So we are in After Effects and what we're going to do is first import the Illustrator file. Normally what I do for a logo animation is I will break it up in Adobe Illustrator and then do all of my animation and recreating inside of After Effects. So to do that, you can go to File, Import, File, and we can see here I have an Illustrator file, CM, the year, uh, logo, 4K. I always take a logo that is from a designer and reformat it to a 4K 16 by 9 composition just so that it works well for my video reasons, video purposes, whatever. So let's import that. Make sure the import kind is as a composition and we have footage dimensions set to layer size. Click OK and that will bring in a composition right here and it will have Illustrator files in each sort of Illustrator format, vector format, excuse me. So basically it imports vectors. Now what's cool about this method is you can then select all of those Illustrator files, right click, create, create shapes from vector layer. And then if we drag all that above the vector layers, we can see now we have some shapes. So if we solo, this one, we have the Creatives Morning box, and then we can solo the next piece. We have the Creatives Morning text. Let's just turn off the transparency grid right there. And then we can see the orange box, and then we have the Orange County text. Now, from this point here, normally what I would do is I would recreate this layer from scratch in After Effects, because the shape layers that Illustrator spits out often converts things to paths when I want rectangles and whatever else. Now, let me know if you wanna see that in another video, but I'm gonna to jump to my other composition, my tutorial composition, where I already did that. I have all of my elements of the logo separated. So I have my little triangle from the little chat box of the black rectangle. I have the black rectangle. I have the orange stroke. I have the orange box. I have the creative text. If you turn off that transparency grid, you can see the text a little bit better. And I just recreated all this fun stuff using the After Effects tools. So let's dive into some animation stuff. I want to have this black rectangle do something. Maybe start from left to right. So to do that, I first need to set the anchor point. So let's just solo this black rectangle for a second. We'll hit Y on our keyboard to go to our pan behind tool, and then we can drag that anchor point to the far left. And if we, if we have snapping on right there, it will make it as pixel perfect as I want to right there. There we go. It's actually not on that line, so let's just get that right there. Okay. Then, oh, why are we being funky? Then, from here, we can go to fit, hit S on our keyboard, make sure that the chain on it is unlinked, so you don't want to see that chain. Make a keyframe by hitting the stopwatch, and then set that to zero, and then move forward, say, 15 frames, so shift and then page down once and then page down five times. One, two, three, four, five. Fun fact, I use a gaming mouse for my all my creative work. It has a lot of buttons on it. And if you want to learn how I did that, check out this video up wherever on the screen. So we'll set the scale to 100 percent and then we will select those keyframes, hit F9 on our keyboard, go to the graph editor. Let's just zoom in, grab that handle, and just pull her in. And if we just solo that rectangle, oh, turn on the transparency grid because it's a black box and a black background. That doesn't help. Pretty cool. Looks nice and easy. Now what I want to do is I want to duplicate that box. So if I select that layer, hit Control D, and let's move that forward, let's say two frames. One, 
two. And then what I want to do is that bottom layer, I want to unhide that and set the fill on that bottom one to this orange color right there. And then let's duplicate that rectangle two and move that forward two frames. And we'll keep that third one that's on top black, but we'll set the rectangle two to a, a white. And what does that do? And if we solo those three rectangles, pretty sweet. So now what we can do is we can select those three rectangles, change the layer color, let's just say yellow, just so we know that that is that portion of the logo. All right, unhide those. Next, let's go to the Creative Mornings text. Now I had this organized based off of shape layers, then my text and all that, but I'm actually gonna put the creative and mornings just above the rectangle. So from a hierarchical standpoint of where the, the person is looking, I want them looking there. So now what we can do is we can set the creative mornings text to only look at the mat or only display when it's on top of the black rectangle. So to do that, we're gonna to go to effects and presets and hey look, I have the set matte effect already searched, but if you just type set matte here and drag it on to creative mornings or creative rather, and then set that to rectangle three, which is the black rectangle. And then go to mornings and then do the same exact thing. Rectangle three, you can see here if we solo, all of that stuff, pretty sweet. Then what we do, is we wanna take a look at that triangle. So we got this little guy right here and we know that it's like a chat bubble. So we could maybe just have it like pop out or something like that, um, or I'm gonna have this slide in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Y on the keyboard to select that pan behind tool one more time. Bring that up to the upper left hand corner. Reveal the position by hitting P and then if we hold shift and then S, it will reveal a second property. So the scale property and we will set a keyframe and we'll go to one second and move those keyframes that we just made to one second and then at frame say, 15 will set the position to the very beginning of that rectangle, so right there, that's about fine. And then set the scale to zero. Select those keyframes, hit F9, and let's go to the position, right click on it, separate dimensions, go to the X position. And now what we can do is we can only affect the X and be a little bit more fine tuned. Actually, I wanna make sure I am so selecting the scale. And... Let's see, how does that look? Actually, the reason why I'm doing this is because I want it to sort of like follow as if the black rectangles are like pulling it along. So right, maybe I'll have it start right about here. I kind of want it to pop out. That's fun. All right, cool. So now we have the creative mornings uh, part coming in. So now we need to do the orange county. So how are we gonna do that? I kind of want everything to start from left to right. So let's select all our layers, hit U to hide everything else. And then we'll go to our orange box. Now, same thing, the pan behind tool, bring that to the very far left and then we'll hit S and then 
then we'll go to rectangle three and hit U to reveal our keyframes. And we'll select those keyframes, go to the orange box, and then paste. So now it's literally copying the same thing. Same velocity, so we don't really have to do all that much more. I do want this one to go a little bit faster though, and I want it to start a little bit later after that. Uh, let's set the end point to the beginning of this keyframe by holding Alt and then the left bracket. And then let's go to the stroke of the orange box, which I have indicated by my layers. We'll go to contents, orange box, and we see I have a trim paths here. And what that will do is that will sort of trim the stroke around the box. Now, I want it starting from left to right, so I'm gonna actually set the start to, or the offset rather, zero, two, one fifty-ish, one forty-ish, something like or like that, and then I'm gonna set the end to zero rather and then move forward 20 frames, and then set that to 100%. F9 on those keyframes by selecting them and hitting F9 to ease them, make it feel a little bit more natural. Scooch that layer forward just a little bit. Bring the Orange County forward just a hair, and then what we're going to do is we're gonna set matte on that same text layer, but look at the orange box instead. Fun fact, I'm using a second plugin called uh, FX Console from Video Copilot. I highly recommend using it. It just allows you to add effects to layers a lot more easily, but you can still do the effects and presets panel here. Set matte, set this to the orange box. So now that's not gonna pop up unless it's looking at the orange box. Now what I want to do is scooch those layers forward and scooch this forward. Alright, let's see what we're looking at so far. Pretty simple, everything coming left to right. And then the last thing I want to do is I kind of want to have this TM pop up from behind this sort of orange box. So let's go into the position property by hitting P, bring the endpoint right here, keyframe position, right click, separate dimensions, select that X position and move it forward. Let's say a couple frames, something like that. And then just bring it behind that orange box and make sure we put it below in the layer stack. Frames, hit F9 and give us a real solid ease there. All right, that's pretty cool. Everything's moving left to right. Now the one thing I want to do is I want to add a little bit more life to this. Now I could do this with little particles or shape layers or whatever else, but the last thing I want to do is animate this text. So what we're going to do is we're going to have everything move, all the text move from right to left, sort of like a contradictory movement. And it'll, trust me, it'll look good. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the creative portion in, or creative text rather, and we're going to find that spot on the timeline where it sort of peaks its its head in. So right about frame eight, we'll go to animate, position, and then we'll go to position, this new position property that was just added under animator, and scooch that over, let's say 200 pixels. And then set the endpoint to frame eight, Go to the range selector, set the offset to negative 100%. Keyframe there, forward, let's say 
20 frames and then 100% go into the advanced tab, set it to ramp up and then the ease high 65 and ease low 65. And what does that look like? And I actually wanna have it start just a little sooner. Cool. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy that animator, paste it onto the morning section. That should put it right there. We'll move this to frame 16. Maybe, yeah, frame 16. And then we'll go to the Orange County and on frame 108, paste that. Hit U to reveal our keyframes, bring that in point right there. Select all layers by hitting Control A, and then U to hide everything, and let's see how that looks. And the last thing, there's a little boo-boo I have. We gotta make sure all that text starts before the shape layers come in so that it all sort of makes sense. Now I want the timing of Orange County, that text to sort of start as the shape is starting, so maybe put that right. Control A to reveal all of our properties, and you know what? I'm gonna drag all of my text layers above, hit U on the keyboard, and I'm going to Shorten that up by holding Alt on our keyboard and selecting all those keyframes, and then while still holding Alt, dragging the very last keyframe in, and that will bring all those keyframes closer together. And what that will do is basically make it so that I can uh, make the animation happen a little bit faster. So, and that orange county needs to start. Not bad, looks pretty cool. Super basic and normally what I would do at this point is add a ton more flair and love and TLC, adding little elements and little shapes bouncing all around and all that fun stuff, but this gets you started. Basically, it's all about thinking, what are the shapes in my logo and how am I gonna make them move? So the shapes here, we had a rectangle, we had triangle, we had another rectangle, we had a stroke of a rectangle, and then the trademark. And what I did with the text is just recreate it using the attribute font, which was in the logo, and just make it look sort of a little bit more lively, so to speak. Obviously, you can do more with it, but this should get you started. Let me know if you have any specific questions or if you want me to show you how I can recreate a logo in After Effects, but this is typically where I would start for a basic logo animation. There you go, that's it. That's basic logo animation. Thank you very much for watching. I'm gonna give you a high five to close this video out, but before I do that, I just wanna say thank you very much for watching my face for about t however long this video is and if you have any questions let me know in the comment section down below I'll see you next time bye 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 I appreciate you bye put the place up